Hi everyone, welcome to the WSO2 Identity Server Strong Authentication with Adaptive Authentication Training video. In this video, we're going to learn about the usage and benefits of adaptive authentication. Let's begin by understanding what authentication is. Authentication is the process of distinctly identifying a certain entity using a knowledge factor, an ownership factor, and an inheritance factor. The knowledge factor is something the user knows, such as the user password, a PIN, or a security question. The ownership factor is something the user has, such as the ATM card, the identity card, the mobile phone, or a security token. The inheritance factor is something the user is or does, such as biometrics. The most common form of authentication gets you to enter the username and password. However, using just the password may not be a strong authentication mechanism. You can pick the number of authentication factors to be used. The single factor authentication mechanism utilizes a single factor to authenticate an entity. The two factor authentication, also known as 2FA, utilizes two factors to authenticate an entity. The multi factor authentication, also known as MFA, utilizes two or more factors to authenticate an entity. So, two factor authentication is also a subset of MFA. You can increase your authentication strength by using more authentication factors. When using multi-factor authentication, you have to balance convenience over security. If you add more authentication factors, the security will be better. However, the need to deal with several authentication steps could be perceived as a hassle for the user. On the other hand, if you reduce the number of authentication factors, the security will be reduced. Therefore, the enterprises should identify the correct equilibrium in order to prevent security breaches while facilitating a good user experience. Adaptive authentication helps enterprises to address this concern. Let's learn more about adaptive authentication. Adaptive authentication enables enterprises to adjust the authentication strength based on the user's risk profile and behavior. This prevents users from having to experience the same number of authentication steps at every login. Adaptive authentication considers various factors when deciding on the authentication steps that should be presented. These factors include request or environment factors, user attributes and roles, the required level of assurance, which is known as LOA, the user behavior, the analytics and machine learning, and many more. Let us now explore some common adaptive authentication scenarios. In role-based adaptive authentication, the number of authentication steps the user has to experience is determined by the user role assigned to the user. For example, a user in a managerial position will have access to sensitive data. To prevent unauthorized access to such data, the enterprise can add additional authentication steps that an ordinary application user would not have to experience. In device-based adaptive authentication, the number of authentication steps the user has to experience is determined by the device that is used to access the application. For example, the enterprises can add more authentication steps to the users who are accessing the applications from a mobile device. In this scenario, the number of authentication steps the user has to experience is determined by either IP address or the geographical location of the user. For example, if a user suddenly accesses the application from an IP address that relates to a country that the user usually doesn't access from, the authentication can include additional authentication steps to verify the authenticity of the user. In this scenario, the number of authentication steps the user has to experience is determined based on the assurance. For example, if you consider a balance inquiry and a fund transfer, the criticality of a fund transfer is higher when compared to a criticality of a balance inquiry. Therefore, the banks can add additional authentication steps for a fund transfer. In this scenario, the number of authentication steps the user has to experience is determined based on events analysis. 
When a user attempts to access an application, WSO2 ID server will call WSO2 ID server analytics to identify any abnormal patterns, map their impacts, and communicate the results within milliseconds. For users who are identified with high risk profiles, additional authentication steps will be prompted. We have now come to the end of this training video. Let's have a quick recap of what we learned from this training. First, we got a quick overview of authentication. Then we learned about the benefits of using adaptive authentication and the associated decision factors. Finally, we got to know some common adaptive authentication scenarios. If you have any questions or need further clarification, feel free to get in touch with us through the following channels. Our email is iam hyphen dev at wso2.org in Stack Overflow, tag wso2 or wso2ies with your questions and our Slack channel is wso2ies.slack.com. Thanks for watching this video. We hope to meet you in another exciting training video.